The arising and the cessation of the five skandhas, Volume 8, Chapter 8. Sutra. Ananda then arose from his seat. Having heard the Buddha's instruction, he bowed and respectfully upheld it, remembering every word and forgetting none. Then, once more in the great assembly, he spoke to the Buddha. The Buddha has told us that in the manifestation of the five skandhas, there are five kinds of falseness that come from our own thinking minds. We have never before been blessed with such subtle and wonderful instructions as the Tathagata has now given. Commentary Ananda then arose from his seat. Having heard the Buddha's instruction, he bowed and respectfully upheld it, remembering every word and forgetting none. Hearing Shakyamuni Buddha's teaching, Ananda bows to the Buddha, but this time he does not cry. He cried so many times in the past, but now he does not cry, because he has eaten his fill. He's been like a child, drinking milk. Now that he's full, he doesn't cry anymore. Or again, he is like a child that wants candy. Once he gets his fill of sweets, he stops crying. Ananda has also obtained some candy to eat, so he does not cry anymore. He prostrated himself and upheld the Dumbledore of the great Shuragama Samadhi with extreme reverence. He had memorized the spiritual mantra, Suragama mantra, without getting a single syllable, syllable wrong or leaving any out, and every word and phrase was very clear. As he, he recited the mantra with his mouth, he contemplated it in his mind and did not create any evil karma with his body. Thus, the three karmas of body, mouth, and mind were all pure as he recited the spiritual Shuragama Mantra. Then once more in the Great Assembly, he spoke to the Buddha. People should not get the wrong idea here. When Ananda speaks out again in the Assembly, it's certainly not the case that he is showing off. It's not that he wants everyone to notice him. What is he doing then? He is seeking the Dharma on behalf of living beings. He is doing it not for his own sake, but for you and me, his fellow cultivators in the present time. He thinks, oh, in the future, there will be a Dharma assembly in America. Someone will lecture on the Surakama Sutra there, and those people may not have totally understood it to this point. So I will ask for some more Dharma on their behalf. We should really be grateful to Ananda. He said, the Buddha has told us that in the manifestation of the five skandhas of form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness, there are five kinds of falseness that come from our own thinking minds. Each of these five kinds of falseness further divides into ten kinds of demonic states. We have never before been blessed with such subtle and wonderful instructions as the Tathagata has now given. Those of us in this great assembly have never before, in our ordinary daily lives, heard the Buddha speak such wonderful doctrines. We have truly gained what we never had before, and we are peaceful and content with in body and mind. Sutra further. Are these five skandhas destroyed all at the same time, or are they extinguished in sequence? What are the boundaries of these five layers? Commentary Further, are these five skandhas of form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness destroyed all at the same time, and we get rid of them all at once, or are they extinguished in sequence? Do they go away little by little in a certain order, one layer after another, what are the boundaries of these five layers? What are their limits? Sutra, we only hope the Tathagata, out of great compassion, will explain this in order to purify the eyes and illuminate the minds of those in the Great Assembly, and in order to serve as eyes for living beings of the future. Commentary We only hope the Tathagata, out of great compassion, will explain this 
Our only wish is that the Tathagata will let the great compassion issue forth from his heart and explain this for us. In order to purify the eyes and illuminate the minds of those in the great assembly, clear up our eyes and minds. If your mind does not understand, you will not cultivate. If your eyes are clouded by defilements, they will not be able to see clearly. So Ananda asks that the eyes and minds of those in the great assembly be purified. Not only does he want their eyes and minds to be purified, he also requests that the Buddha serve as eyes for living beings of the future, that is, for you, me, and all other living beings of the present. We are all included in the definition of living beings. You cannot exclude yourself even if you want to. If you say, I don't count, I am not part of the definition of living beings, then let me ask you, what are you? Speak up. Even if you wanted to, you can't run away. Even if you put on wings, you can't fly off. Even if you went to the moon, you would still be a living being. You can't be anything else. So be good and admit that you're part of our group. Don't run away. Being good means you shouldn't lose your temper or act up. Your mind shouldn't feel like a pancake that sizzles and sticks to the pan. That's very hard to bear. Ananda says, be eyes for us and for those of the future. The mission does not end here. Eyes for the future continues on into the future and by definition that is a time that hasn't arrived yet. When you hear this, don't you think it's wonderful? Does it make sense? When you laugh, all the people who don't understand Chinese are confused and want to know what you're laughing about. So let's translate this quickly. Sutra, the Buddha told Ananda, the essential, true, wonderful brightness and perfect purity of basic enlightenment does not admit birth and death, nor any mundane defilements, nor even empty space itself. All these are brought forth because of false thinking. Commentary The Buddha told Ananda, the essential, true, wonderful brightness and perfect purity of basic enlightenment does not admit birth and death. What is this state like? It is just the essential, true, wonderfully bright and perfect pure state of basic enlightenment. Birth and death cannot exist in that state, nor any mundane defilements, nor even empty space itself. What is being described is the treasury of the Tathagata. It is the basic substance of true suchness, the Buddha nature inherent in us all. It's not that you have it and I don't or that I have it and you don't. We are all endowed with the essential, true, wonderful brightness and perfect purity of basic enlightenment. Within it, there is not a single defilement. Within it, there is not a single dharma established. There isn't anything at all. If you can return to the origin, then you will be free of uh, ignorance, lust, greed, stupidity, and false thinking. You will have none of them. It is an absolute and total purity. That is the aim of our cultivation, to return to that place inherent in us all. If this place did not exist, there would be no reason for anyone to cultivate. We can all see empty space, but do you know where it comes from? All these are brought forth because of false thinking. Empty space comes from our false thoughts. False thinking brings into being the five skandhas, the five turbidities, and the six knots. It creates all kinds of troublesome things. This is just a case of looking for something to do when there isn't anything to do. Why do you do it? Because you have no work to do and you want to look for some. That's okay if you can reap a reward. Unfortunately, though, the more you work, the more you lose. If you work for others, the more you work, the more money you lose. It also like running a business. The longer you run it, the more money you lose. You keep taking losses until eventually the treasury of the Tathagata is pressed flat beneath the mountain of the five skandhas. 
Once that happens, the bandits of the six sense faculties and the six sense objects occupy the mountain of the five skandhas as they eat out. They go all over it, robbing and plundering. See how all the time until today you have been attracting thieves and sheltering bandits. At the beginning you were doing business, but then you began to lose capital and now it cost you your life. The thieves go about looting and stealing and they go right ahead and kill people as well. Therefore, your inner nature is squashed underneath the mountain of the five skandhas and the six sense faculties and six sense objects are bandits that go around looting everywhere. Do you understand now? If you understand this principle, then I have not lectured on the sutra in vain. If you don't understand, then you will have to study it gradually. Sutra, the thoughts of basic enlightenment, which is wonderfully bright, true, and pure, falsely gives rise to the material world. Just as Anadatta became confused about his head when he saw his own reflection. Commentary, the source of basic enlightenment, in which not a single Dharma abides, is essential, true, wonderful brightness and perfect purity of basic enlightenment, which is wonderfully bright, true and pure, falsely gives rise to the material world. When that happens, falseness arises based on truth. In the treasury of the Tathagata, falseness arises. The sentient world refers to all living beings while the material world refers to the mountains, rivers, buildings, and the earth itself. It is just as the Yanayadatta Janadatta became confused about his head when he saw his own reflection. One morning he got up, looked in the mirror, and saw that the person in the mirror had eyes, ears, lips, and a nose, and he exclaimed, Why don't I have a head like that? That person in the mirror has one, why don't I? He went running all over the place trying to find his head. Do you think his head was utterly lost though? Do you remember that I mentioned Yanadatta earlier? If not, try to think back. What kind of person was Yanadatta? Was he an intelligent person or a foolish one? Did he have a head or was he headless? If you realize that you, he had no head, would you think he was a freak if you saw him? Think about it. Today is the beginning of a new life for all of us here, so we must wash our bodies and minds clean. Put aside all the unclean things you were involved with in the past, and be sure that from now on the things you pick up are clean. By clean, we mean being free of the five down servants, greed, hatred, stupidity, pride, and doubt. Today's precept transmission was the first of its kind in America, and so you are the first initiates into Buddhism in this country. But you should know that there aren't any advantages for the people who come first. You have, you will have to endure bitterness. Why is that? Because there is no model to follow. There are no precedents, and so you don't know how to go about what you have to do. Sometimes you get disoriented. You make mistakes without even realizing they are mistakes. Why? Because you basically don't understand what you're going about doing and there's nothing you can go to learn. Although Japanese Buddhism has been in America for a long time, it is a very synthetic Buddha drama. By that I mean it tends to be abstract and lacking in substance. You may call what they practice the Buddha Dharma, but it really isn't like the Buddha Dharma. But if you say it's only Dharma, they will tell you it's the Buddha Dharma. It's impossible to tell what it really is. It doesn't fit the mode. Why not? Because it doesn't have a genuine foundation. For instance, there's a Korean monk now who claims to be one of the Tsao Creek sect. It's hard to figure out how Tsao Creek got to Korea. 
It is a case of hanging out a sheep's head but selling dog's meat. He hangs out a sign that says, The waters of South Creek. But what he sells is the mud and silt of Korea. There's no water in it, so how can it be South Creek? I really don't like to talk this way, but I see that these kinds of people are simply too pitiful. It's a case of the blind leading the blind. He claims to be of the South Creek sect, and a lot of intelligent Americans follow him and become part of the South Creek sect too. But just exactly what is the origin of South Creek, they don't know. Where is South Creek located? What does that place look like? They don't know. This is truly a ridiculous shame. Now you have received the precepts of Orthodox Buddhism. This is a proper Buddha drama and is different from those here tickled sects that treat people of their money in the name of the way. For example, they say, give me $65 and I will transmit the drama to you. It isn't that now you have been given a precept as such. The money you paid does not come to me. It is used to purchase your sash. Whenever you attend the Dharma assembly, you should wear the sash. It shows the reverence to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. This Dharma assembly will conclude tomorrow. From now on, where whenever there is a Dharma assembly, the pupil wearing sashes will stand in the front and those wearing only the robe but not the sash should stand in the back. Also, those who have held the precepts for a longer time should stand in front, and those who have newly received the precepts should stand in the back. This is the order we follow in Buddhism. Today, I congratulate you all for completing your three-month course of study. Also, your study has concluded. Your work is just starting. What is your work? You must help all human beings in the world to end their suffering. Their suffering can be ended only if someone lends a helping hand. The suffering of humanity is not limited to a single country. Throughout the whole world, humanity is suffering. Therefore, people of great wisdom are needed to remind humanity of its suffering. Only then will human beings know to seek for true happiness. What is the greatest suffering? The greatest source of suffering is our greed. Greed is one of the greatest afflictions. Anger is also one of the biggest afflictions. And stupidity is also one of the greatest afflictions. Greed, anger, and stupidity are the three poison. Yet people feel that these three are their best friends and so they are reluctant to part with them. Due to their lack of understanding, people don't renounce these poisons. If they understood, the suffering of humanity would come to an end. In this Suragama Dharma Assembly, which began on July the 16th, we cultivated and studied non-stop from 6 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening every day. This period of a little over three months has been tremendously valuable. Now this valuable time has already passed and you have learned this precious knowledge and made it a part of yourselves. You must tell the whole world about the Buddha drama that you have learned. So the whole world will know how to live suffering, attain bliss, and realize great wisdom. Don't do any more foolish things or things that don't benefit people. This Dharma assembly could be considered the first of its kind in Buddhism throughout the entire world. It's absolutely unprecedented. Although there are Many sutra lectures in other places, they don't study from morning till night without rest like we've done. Now you should take the principles of Buddhism you've learned and use them to help all the world's people who are drift, adrift in the sea of suffering. Help them to depart from suffering, find happiness, and quickly attain the Buddha way. This is my hope. Sutra, 
the falseness basically has no cause but in your false thinking you set up causes and conditions but those who are confused about the principle of causes and conditions call it spontaneity even empty space is an illusory creation how much the more so are causes and conditions and spontaneity which are mere speculations made by the false minds of living beings commentary this passage discusses the causes and conditions of our false thoughts what is meant by causes and conditions when a person does not understand the principle of causes and conditions in his confusion he will regard it as a spontaneity and thus fall among the external list therefore the text says the falseness basically has no cause there is no basis for a source of false thinking without any basis there is no substance to it someone asked me what is false thinking my reply was what you are asking right now about false thinking is just a false thinking your question itself is false thinking where do you go to find false thoughts they don't have any root once they pass they are gone being false they are without substance to speak of false thinking as a thing is already inappropriate because fundamentally there isn't uh, any thing but in your false thinking you set up causes and conditions in your false thinking without any basis you say that there are causes and conditions but those who are confused about the principle of causes and conditions call it spontaneity if you understand causes and conditions there's no problem but those who are confused about the principle of causes and conditions do not have any understanding of it drama master ultimately what are these causes and conditions you've been talking about you may ask causes and conditions were discussed at length earlier in the sutra it is a drama used for refuting the dramas of external teachings it is the drama of the small vehicle and thus is basically not a particular deep doctrine it basically says that whatever the cause so will be the conditions people who do not understand the doctrine of causes and conditions will call it spontaneity instead that's the case of swallowing the dead whole what is meant by swallowing the dead whole maybe you aren't familiar with dates you could say it's swallowing an apple whole without biting or chewing it first what does it taste like you don't know those who are confused about the principle of causes and conditions those who misunderstand it call it spontaneity which is a doctrine of external sects even empty space is an illusory creation now this does not refer to causes and conditions or spontaneity this refers to empty space what is empty space it comes up from your false thinking as the verse spoken earlier by manjushri bodhisattva says the space created within great enlightenment is like a single bubble in all the sea the empty space in the nature of great enlightenment is just like a bubble in the ocean it comes from false thinking how much the more so are causes and conditions and spontaneity which are mere speculations made by the false minds of living beings what are causes and conditions what is a spontaneity causes and conditions and spontaneity these two theories are just speculations dreamed up by the false thinking minds of the living beings i don't know if my explanation is correct but you can all think about it